Hello and welcome to another Spark AR tutorial video. In this video we'll be looking at how to create a hole in the head effect and we'll be utilizing a variety of face meshes and occlusion materials to achieve this. So first thing we're going to want to do is we're going to want to add our face mesh and by adding our face mesh we'll automatically add our face tracker object to our scene. And I'm just going to turn the eyes and mouth off this mesh. I'm also going to rename this to Face Tracker Mesh or Face Tracker. And with this face mesh selected, we're going to want to extract the camera face data. So to do that, we select our face tracker. We go to Texture Extraction, click on the little plus button, and this will extract our facial features. We can now go to our face tracker mesh, go to materials, click on the little plus button to create a new material and then rename this new material to face tracker or something appropriate as well. Make sure this is changed to a flat shader type and then apply our face tracker texture. So what we're going to want to do is we're going to want to utilize this mesh to cut out the hole. And the way we're going to be doing that is using some SDF patches. So with our face mesh, let's, we're going to go to view, show uh, patch editor. We're going to turn off our use depth test and write to depth buffer on our material. And we're going to want to do that for most of the materials we create today. We're going to drag our face tracker texture into our patch editor because we're going to need to take the input from our texture file. And then we want to then click on our face tracker material again and take the texture data. So this will be our output, diffuse texture, and also add that to our patch editor. So because we're going to be making an animated cutout, I'm going to want to use a loop animation. And again, this you wouldn't have to do this if you didn't want your cutout to not be animated, but I kind of want mine to be. I'm then going to add a delay so it will not start immediately and have a bit of a wait before it kicks into its animation transition. And I'm just going to give it a rough value now. I can always go in and change this later on, like I can with any of these values. And I'm just going to add a transition patch. I'm going to make sure this transition patch though is changed from being a vector free to being a number because we're only going to be working with two values, a start and an end value. So my start value, I'm going to put in it as 200 and my end value at around 50. But again, I can always change this. And I'm also going to change my curve to be a circular in and out. And again, you can play about with these as you see fit. So for my transition patch, I'm going to drag and link that to our SDF twist and unlink that to make sure and just make sure that my value is linked to the twist value, not to the SDF input. I'm going to just move this over here because we're going to need to add an SDF shape. So the SDF shape I've chosen to use for this video is an SDF star. But again, you could use a circle, a rectangle, you could use any variety that you want to see fit. I'm just going to increase my sides to about 6 and reduce its outer radius to about 0.3. And then link this SDF up to my SDF twist value. So I'm going to click and drag from my SDF value and I'm just going to add a step and make sure that my step value is linked to my edge of my step, not to the top input. Let's do a bit more tidying up. And then I'm going to add a pack to take these values and change this pack to be a vector 2 because we're going to be working with two sets of values and link this up to my diffuse texture. Now this will throw up an error. This will be the case until we've linked it all up. So I'm going to add my, link my step to my bottommost pack input and then link the RGB value of my face tracker texture to my pack top input. 
And if I now zoom into my z scene, um, we should start to see what it's doing. So we can see how we've got this cutout of the uh, middle of the face with this sort of spirally edging to it, which is animated to give us a kind of portal look. But this is actually the wrong way around. I actually want this to be the inverse. So we're going to have to do a few little things to get that to be the way we want it to be. And I'm also just going to change my speed to be 0 0.5 just so the animation plays a bit faster with less of a delay. And again, if I wanted my animation to play slower, I can just change the speed on my loop animation duration value. So now I want to make sure it's a reverse. So to do that, I'm going to just go over to my SDF twist and make sure it's linked to the top step, not the bottom one. I was a little bit wrong earlier. So if I had it on the bottom one, it will be the way you saw it. If I have it linked to the top one, it will reverse it essentially. So we have this whole cutout now. So now we can start to add more face meshes. So we're going to add another face mesh and again make sure this is a child of your face tracker. Turning the eyes and mouth off. I'm just going to rename this to be border. I'm going to apply a new material and this new material I will also rename to be border. I'm going to change this border's colour to be uh, a sort of dark grey slash black. Going to add another one more face mesh. Again, making sure it's a child of my face tracker. And I'm just going to create another material. And this material is going to be flat again. And I want the color to be a solid black in this case. So I should have three face meshes all on top of each other at this stage. So I'm just going to rename my face mesh to be fill. And I've also renamed the material assigned to that to be fill as well. So with my fill and border selector, I'm just going to turn off use depth test and write to depth buffer on the advanced render options. I'm going to select my border and fill and make sure these are on a new layer. So I'm just going to, for now, put them onto layer one. We will be changing this later on. So now you should see that we have our cutout hole and this sort of black void in the middle of the face. We could always adjust the position of this void by changing our SDF star center values in our patch editor. So with our fill selected, we're going to now select the fill material and we're going to bring the texture into our patch editor and we're going to add some gradient to it. So the way we can do that is we can just add a gradient patch. And this will give us a bit of a fall off between a solid black to a sort of lighter color. And I can change it from being a horizontal to a central, but again, you can play about that and see what to the effect you want. You can also add a gradient step, which will control how much, how many steps are involved in that gradient uh, to go from black to white or vice versa. So I'm just going to go a range of about two to six. And again, I can always go in and adjust this as I see fit. So at the moment it's a bit too light, so I'm just going to need to tweak my color values. So as you can see, i have um, going to now do that at this moment in time. So I've changed the character previewer. Uh, I'm going to select my fill color and border color and I'm just going to make them a lot darker. So I'm trying to hide the nose and eye features. Now if I had a mesh that was more concave and wasn't using a face mesh we wouldn't have this issue. We could just use an inverse uh, sort of cylinder. Uh, I'm just going to now import this skull object into my scene. So this is going to be the object that is revealed in the hole. This could be your own 3D model. Uh, I'm just going to import this into the project, uh, like so, just give it a moment, and there we are. So by dragging this skull object onto my face tracker, 
and then making sure this is below my face tracker mesh and above my border face mesh. So it's in between the two. I can now, this will now be in the right position. So I need to scale this down. So I'm going to pause my video, scale this down and just position this to be roughly where I want it to be, moving it back into the head on the Z axis. So it is sort of in the face. I'm going to make sure the values are zero, zero on the X and Y. And I'm just using my Z value to adjust its position. So it's behind the front foremost face mesh. So I now need to make sure that my face tracker is on layer zero. I'm going to make sure my skull mask is also on layer zero. Because if I have it on layer one, it won't do anything at the moment. As you will soon see, I'll actually have to go in and fix this. And I'm going to make sure that my border and fill are on a new layer. So I'm going to make a layer two and make sure my border and fill face mesh are on this new layer. As you can see, my school mesh at the moment is not on the right layer, so it's a fixed up. I'm going to simply uh, select my school mesh again and make sure that the main parent of this school object is set to layer zero, the same as my frontmost face mesh. So making sure that it's set to layer zero. And then going to make sure that the root objects, so the parented or uh, objects to that 3D model, are set to layer one. So the parent layer zero, the children layer one of that 3D model. And now we should have this sort of skull peeking through the hole. I can now click on my skull object, and I'll be able to now adjust the position and value as I see fit. So selecting my skull object, I'm just going to check everything is OK. And now selecting it, I'm now going to pause my video and just scale this up and move its position to where I see fit. And again, making sure it doesn't creep outside of the edges of my face mesh. So now if I preview this on myself, you should see Oh, I'm just going to have to hit restart just because it's a bit uh, distorted at the moment. So here we go. And as you can see, uh, I basically got this skull within my face. Now the mouth doesn't move when my mouth does. To do that, I'd have to rig the 3D model to have the mouth and eye joints, uh, as you'd see in the sample 3D model that the face mesh comes with. Uh, and also I'm aware that there's a bit of occlusion happening at the back where I haven't actually scaled the skull quite correctly. Uh, but that would be an easy fix, just adjusting the scale on the Z value for this model. So you can sort of see how you could create this hole in the face effect and try putting in various things. So I have been Stephen Fisher. This has been another Spark AR tutorial video. I hope you found this useful and remember to like, comment and subscribe and I'll see you again soon.